I'm just me and, you know, um, I, and I have to be true to myself, you know, I think that's part of it. Hi there, I'm hey. Christian. I'm Eric. This is the Bears and Success Show. So for this episode, it's be very interesting. We're going to talk about music. Yes, we're going to be talking with Paul Middleton, an indie artist originally from the UK, and he currently lives in Berlin. He moved a few months ago in Germany. And we're going to talk about music, uh, bears, about positivity, mental health. mental health, and also related single. This one, Love at First Sight, is a cover of his favorite song of by Kelly Minogue. We're gonna talk about this song, also the cover, why, the pictures, and much more. Much, much more. At first sight, cause Hey Paul. Hey Paul. Hey guys, you okay? You're good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Very good. Welcome to our channel, our show, and everything. Yeah, Bears and Excess show. Yes. It's really nice to be, and you know, thank you for inviting me as well. By the way, boys, really, That's really a pleasure. Good. Yeah. How has the pandemic been treating you? There's been positives and 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 negatives. I mean, um, so when it all started in the UK, it. It, you know, I, I, I live with someone who was classified as vulnerable. So, you know, there's a lot of responsibility to kind of make sure that they're okay and um, look after them. And, um, and you know, singing on the side of that, singing has been kind of, you know, I've been making a living from it and all gigs stopped, which was, you know, the, the, the negative. Um, and, and to be honest, being away from my partner because... I was in the UK, but I'm now in Berlin living with my partner. But at the time, for the first three, four months, we didn't see each other. And, you know, it was, it was, that was really, really hard. I found that really, really tough, um, you know, because we missed each other. You know, we're, we're quite early in our relationship, um, two years, we're going on to two years. Um, and, you know, it, it, I, I missed him an awful lot. So that was really tough. But, um, you know, there's a lot of positives as well. Um, I still managed to kind of, um, one of my side jobs was being a teacher and um, I still managed to teach online with my students, which was great. Um, and I managed to get involved in lots of like music projects as well. Um, I recorded a little uh, covers um, EP called Quarantunes. I called it Quarantunes just to kind of like mark the occasion of what was going on. And, um, and actually probably one of the, the, the the best things I've really enjoyed, like in terms of the music side, is I've kind of got lots of people from around the world, from um, you know different parts of the community. And we all came together and we sang "True Colors," um, Cindy Lauper's song, and it was brilliant. We had tried to pretty much get everyone, you know, to represent the whole community, get involved, and it was it was really really good. Um, so it's been good. Um, it's been tough mentally, um, and I kind of feel now that I'm, I'm, I would love to go back out gigging again, um, but I've kind of accepted it is what it is. I'm happy because I'm with my partner, um, so I'm, I, I kind of feel lucky that I have my health and I'm with him, and that's really the important thing for me. So we yeah, also have each other, close to each other. Yeah, it's finally easier to guess to face. Yes, yeah. alone be harder to go through this. So congratulations about finally being together. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, it's uh, it was very emotional, very emotional seeing him, and um, no, it's great. So thank you so much. <laughs> what did you teach? English uh, to teenagers, eleven to uh, sixteen year olds, and you know they are the best students you know um I, you know i'm a form tutor as well and you know what i actually loved the school i worked at um i'm not doing it anymore because i'm taking a year off um a, a sabbatical to focus on music and also learn some new skills but uh 
uh, yeah, I absolutely love love it, and I have the best students in the world, and and my colleagues as well. It was, it, it was, it was that was tough to leave behind, but um, you know, I'm excited for this year. Year, so yeah. Hmm. Ironically, I'm also an ESL teacher. Oh, that's cool. Do you enjoy it? Yes, I do. I yeah. teach mostly um, international students who come to Canada. Okay. Uh, one of the first words or phrases my partner taught me was "ik liebe dick." which is I love you and um, there's, a, there's a little bit of a story so back in England uh, before I came out to Berlin I was having a goodbye party with my family and they said do you know any German I said oh no um, and uh, I said apart from ich liebe dick and um, you know I was, said that Liebe means love and my cousins are quite, um, they're very like rugby straight kind of, but very, you know, they're very open-minded. And they said, what, you love dick? <laughs> so, I thought it was dick. so it was just a, it was just a very funny uh, moment because, yeah, yeah, it made me laugh anyway. So no, that's what I, I thought you, you meant when you said it. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I'm saying the wrong word, but maybe my partner's taught me the wrong thing that all this whole time. I'm thinking, oh, yeah, means I love you. <laughs> That's a joke, too. That does happen a lot, actually. <laughs> it's wrong words in any of them. But they did it on purpose. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So you, as you mentioned, you recently moved from England to Germany to be with your partner. So how is the moving from one country to another with the language issue, the culture? During the, this pandemic, is a bonus. Um, I've not had a problem because, it, it, I mean, Kim, my partner, speaks really good English, and his it, it, Kim runs um, the Wolf Bar here um, in Berlin, and you know it's it, it's a, it's a great bear bar, and and the staff and the team there also speak English, and I'm quite close to them as well. Um, and to be honest, a lot of people that come to the bar they all speak English and I think they want to practice English so it's not it's not been a I've not had a, a, a barrier as, as such yet I mean when I go to the shops I kind of get by by pointing and you know and people understand so um I've actually I've actually been really lucky really lucky Let's let's look back at your career. How did your music career start? Um, I kind of I, I got into singing uh, at a very young age, maybe you know seven or eight, and I went into my first recording studio. Then um, we were doing a, like a charity song for the school, and I got whittled down to the last six to sing on the actual record or whatever, and. Um, and then I kind of sang in choirs throughout my, my education. And then when I went to university, um, I studied theatre. I really I was into drama. I was in, I did all the school musicals, and um, I really enjoyed all that. You know, it was, it was really great camaraderie amongst the cast members and stuff. So I really enjoyed that world. And at university, kind of to bring extra income in, I thought, okay, what can I do? Um, seeing what can I do to bring a bit of extra income to help fund the university fees and stuff. And so I kind of started seeing solo in, in various restaurants and stuff. And, um, and then I, I, there was one particular place, uh, in the UK, um, a place called Essex. There was a, there was a restaurant there, which kind of was like my weekend thing. I was pretty much there every weekend and it was a restaurant with two floors and you kind of, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this was my sort of like my apprenticeship training for being a singer and a performer and you know that kind of shebang, and we had you had to learn to kind of engage and you know keep the, the attention of two floors of people. So you know you'd be singing on this floor, and then you'd go down and they'd be dead. There'd be no atmosphere there, and you'd have to bring them back up. And then you know, and you just you just learn how to. Well, I learned how to handle, you know, 
difficult crowds, I think, or difficult, difficult audience, not really a crowd, but difficult audiences, you know, um, plus I was up against that, that some of them were eating their food. So I felt like, but we had to sing. So we were like, go sing. It's like, yeah, but they're eating their food. You know? <laughs> um, but you just got on with it. And so that was a great kind of, um, training for me in my early twenties. And then I kind of was involved in, in various groups, um, up until kind of like my mid thirties, um, still doing some solo stuff as well. And, you know, I, I, I kind of, from pe- from where I was gigging, I, I started to get a few people that were very supportive of, of you know, me. And, and they kind of said, oh, you should, you should do something. And I was like, well, okay, what should I do? And um, so my mother died of cancer when I was, um, when I was 15. And <clears throat> I kind of thought, okay, so... I'm going to kind of do a little project of, of raise money for cancer research, which is a charity um, in the UK, and also release music like covers. So I kind of married the two together, and um, and it just kind of that's really how it started to build. Um, and I say this about five six years ago now. So I've kind of you know I'm I'm 41 now, and I kind of feel. Um, there's a fear that there's a little bit of part that I've, I've left it all too late, you know, um, I'm 41, whatever. And I kind of think there's, you know, I can't do anything now musically because I'm past my prime or whatever. But actually the opposite kind of like happened is, you know, every year I've released music and stuff. It, it's kind of grown and grown. And so with people growing and then kind of like becoming aware of what I was doing, um, especially the bear community, word kind of got around um, in different places. And um, I've had so many amazing, amazing opportunities uh, because of the bear community. Um, you know, I, I've, I've, I went to Orlando. to sing there uh, at a bear event there. Um, I went to New York, um, sang at Rock Bar, which is, you know, it's an amazing bar. Um, I've sung in Sitches Pride, I've, seen, uh, I've sung in Germany, uh, at the Unshaved Party here, uh, I've sung in Belgium. Um, <clears throat> I, so, and also I've, I've sung in lots of different places around the UK. And it's just been kind of, it's a little bit what started off really, I guess, as a hobby or as a, as a passion, it's kind of grown and grown and, and kind of, so I've stopped the teaching for a little bit just to kind of focus this year on music a little bit more and take it a little bit more seriously. Um, because I do consider myself an independent artist and there's only so much you can do as a teacher, plus trying to focus on the singing, you know, and, and teaching kids, you know, and I'm very passionate about teaching as well. I'm very passionate about the students I teach and you know, I want to do a good job for them. There's only so much time then you've got for singing. So something had to give. And I kind of feel like right now I want to focus on music and and, and, and try and improve and make myself a better artist. And, you know, I'm going to start writing my own stuff um, for next year. Um, but again, depending where we are with the virus, I don't want to release anything until... I could possibly gig with it because, you know, gigging is such an important thing when you perform those songs live, you know, and you get that response and stuff. Um, so I'm kind of, at the moment, I've still got a few projects which I'm trying to get up, um, you know, finish up this year. But, but next year it's kind of, um, I, I just want to focus on, you know, original stuff and, um, and, and yeah, so that's really where I'm at at the moment. <laughs> Actually, speaking about original, you got well known because of your covers. What did that start? The, the thing of taking a song and transforming into your own. And how do you choose the song? Oh, um, how does it, most of the time it's it, it's all about connection. Like it's got it's got to be either a personal favorite, or it's got to have some memories to it, or it's got to um, evoke. Uh, some sort of emotion. So the very first cover I did was Hands to Heaven. Mm-hmm. 
Tomorrow I must leave The dawn knows no reprieve God give me strength when I am leaving So raise your hands to heaven and pray And because the album was very much for my mother, you know, and for raising you know, money for cancer research, that song was very much about her and, and lyrically, I kind of took the lyrics a little bit more differently, you know, um, tonight I need your sweet caress, hold me in the darkness, you know, and that very much sums me up as someone who misses his mum, you know, um, misses his mother's touch. And do you know what, even now talking about it, I get really emotional about it because it's a song I, I really struggle to sing live because of how much it means. Um, and I only literally sang it probably, I think for the first time probably put it, put something online maybe about six months ago, or actually not even that, during the, the lockdown, I just decided to do a ver to sing it to camera, not in front of an audience. And yeah, it's, it's, it's still a favorite of mine. It's my first cover. So there's that one. Then other covers are just like, okay, that's a really cool song. So Justin Timberlake, Can't Stop the Feeling is a great pop song. Um, but also it gives me a chance to show off my range as well. Um, so I, I did that and um, I, I managed to kind of like get a lot of the Sitches and Barcelona bear community um, involved in the music video for that. Um, and, we, and we performed the song in Sitches and um, it was such a blast. So that's been really good. And then um, I, I've also done, and it's probably one of my favorites to sing live is a cover of Careless Whisper. Um, which is the George Michael classic. I've done kind of like a more, a slightly darker version of it, but it's still very emotional. And that's very much about a, um, a, a, a breakup and feeling like you can never go on again. So. Calls to my best silver screen And now it's sad goodbyes I'm never gonna dance again Guilty feet have got no rhythm You know, again, the lyrics, I'm never gonna dance again. For me, that's I'm never gonna love again. That's it, I'm done with with relationships. And, and from that song, really, you know, I was very much guarded. Um, I was like, I'm never gonna fall in love. I'm never gonna meet anybody. And then, you know, I, I was doing a gig here in Berlin, went to Wolf Bar for a drink and lo and behold, I meet my partner there and, um, and he took me by surprise and it's, it's been the most wonderful experience being with him, so, yeah. That's interesting. Actually, also about the question I was gonna ask. <laughs> Perfect, two in one. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> well, how, do, how does, for example, do you need to get a, a, a approval, a pro, or... authorization from the, the original songwriters or the labels to do that or? You can. You know, it's okay. There's, there's two different ways of doing it. Um, but yeah, there is an approval process involved for sure. Because I, when you have our videos for the Fluffy's channel, sometimes there's a problem to use the songs, even if the artist himself approves. But then there's the the so the label I, or the the, the 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 technical thing behind that is there's two. There's, I mean, it could be two things. One is is whoever's distributed the music, they claim rights to the song even though it's your song and even though you've you've okay so if it's an original and you wanted to use it the my distributor will claim it because they're trying to protect me thinking you're trying to use it regardless of whether you know so that's when they'll say you need to get permission or whatever in terms of a cover um there's slightly a longer process and a more complicated process involved in that but um some but even originals like you know i've got friends artists who are like I was doing a Facebook Live and they muted me, and I was, and so the the system, especially you you have to be careful. YouTube you're pretty safe with, but Facebook um, is is is, and they're clamping down on it as well. So you have to kind of go through the right channels and, and research it properly and um, and do it properly. We noticed some of the videos you you made posted. They're very short, like in length, like, like a minute, 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 minute and a half. Yeah. Even the latest Academy uh, Nogue song is, I mean, is that a, a reason? Yeah, it, it, it's deliberate. And, and the reason the reason being is 
um, is piracy. Um, you know, my music kind of goes around the, for me, is piracy. I mean, there's, there's, there's several reasons. First of all, it's piracy. I know kind of like, um, I had an incident, you know, where I found, I think it's Thailand or the Philippines, where my song was kind of getting passed around freely or whatever. And, and, and what they've done is, you know, it's, it's just ripping the whole song. You know, you, you can do that. You can, and you can still do that. But, and then the other issue is, is because I'm an independent artist and, and limited budget, I think we, I've kind of learned that I want to keep my videos slightly shorter because I just rather pe kind of want people to be engaged. And also I want them to go check out the whole song. You know, I, I know some videos I've, I've done the whole song, but um, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm still, I'm still experimenting and learning. So, but um, you're the second person to the, why is the video longer? I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm an independent artist. I don't have fireworks in my video. I don't have, you know, new models kind of sweating. And I wish I did. I really wish I did, but I just don't have that. And I don't have those resources. And, and especially during, you know, the virus time, um, you don't have access to people because, you know, people don't feel safe or, you know, which, you know, I, I wouldn't want to turn up to a video shoot with, with people not wearing masks and stuff, you know? So, there's, there's a bit of health and safety involved as well. So that it's it's all a mixture of those. Um, so I will t I will try and do longer videos, but um, <laughs> it is really a matter of, you know, keeping it interesting and and also people ripping it and, you know, piracy. And so, you know, it's piracy, kids. <laughs> <laughs> that was interesting because uh, uh, it's my for curiosity, not even a, a, a yeah. criticism or anything, because I thought we were watching. Interesting why they all very short. Really short yeah it makes sense and are you very critical about your own stuff for example when you watch a video later did you oh should I have done that do you have oh, yeah. this kind of thing oh gosh yeah i'm I, I'm, <laughs> I'm i'm sure there's artists out there look back at their early videos and they kind of cringe i mean <laughs> i cringe at some of my early early stuff i mean it's still special i still love it but i'm still kind of um some of the some of the things I do or whatever, I'm just like, oh, um, yeah. <laughs> but I was just like, and, and it's funny, we're talking only six years ago, so it's not that long ago, but you learn so much in that time. And as you get experience with doing a music video, you kind of, again, you learn how to work the camera. That sounds horrible and ridiculous, but you learn how to kind of, have that relationship with the camera better and 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 also i think i've changed as well you know from where i was six years ago i was very um you know whatever how old i was 36 whatever you know I, was, I, I still felt very fresh and i felt you know very like enthusiastic and um even though i was doing very slow emotional songs um so yeah i i, I definitely definitely look back at um the videos and go and i probably and i probably will with even these ones now, because I'm an independent artist, zero budget, you know, and, you know, if I, you know, when I do do pay, you know, there's only so much you can do with an independent artist budget, you know, so. What's the biggest misconception about an independent artist? So many people think about the glamour or, or what's the um, mis biggest misconception? Um, I think probably that, um, we get money for music. We don't get money for music. And, I, and this is really important. I want everyone to realize is, you know, per one stream on Spotify, you get 0.001p. Okay. And it, it, I, I actually have had a joke with other artists about this. I said, if I was to show people out of the six years I've been doing this for and how much I've made, I think people would laugh and say, Paul, what are you doing? The biggest mis misconception is people, independent artists, is that people think, okay, there's money there. There's no money there. It, 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 you know, if you grow and grow and grow, then and you reach a certain level, and we're talking like millions of streams here. We're not talking like thousands. We're talking like millions of streams. Then yes, you might be able to do something and, and make a living. Say, I make a living from music. Um, so that's the biggest probably misconception, and it is. And if you are taking it seriously, it is really hard work. 
And I want the Poe now, 41, would tell the Poe of six years ago. If he comes to you, that Poe, Poe, what should I do? Or what advice would you give to me? Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's a very good question. So what, what would I say to my younger self? Yes. Um, I would probably say find out who you are and be confident who you are. And I, and I probably would say start writing original music. I'd just, I'd just say, just go for it, you know, um, and it, just have fun. I, I mean, I am having fun anyway, but I'd just say go for it. And what else would I say? I'd, um, and I'd also say it takes a long time. Be patient. Be very, very patient. Um, and just enjoy the journey. So that's probably what I'd say. How much internet helps and also doesn't help? Yeah, what are the pros and cons? For for an independent artist, the internet is amazing. Like it's with, without the internet, I cannot, I would not have a any sort of fan base or support network because every, everyone that's found me is because of social media or maybe the odd person who's come to a gig and gone, oh, you know, he, he's really, really good. Um, so the internet has definitely changed how the industry, you know, how, how people are discovered and, um, and, and, and without it, you know, I, I'd be in trouble because how would I connect to people? How, would I, how could I tell people that I've got a song out, you know, because I don't have a record label saying, Oh, here we go. This is, and you know, I don't have posters out or, or billboards out, you know, I, I, I just have my little Instagram and my little Facebook and my little Twitter and, you know, and, and now TikTok, I've joined TikTok and, I just, oh, and and this is my life. I hope you like it. And you know, off we go. Come and join the come and join the chaos and the fun and the love and you know the positivity. You know, so. And how do you deal? Because internet the ne negative, especially we know well. Because of embarrassing says sometimes you get a lot of punches <laughs> and uh, complaints. How do you deal with the other side? People sometimes can be very you not know, sometimes some guys can be very nasty, very yeah. mean in comments. Uh, I think, and I, I genuinely mean this. I've actually been very, very. I think I've. I think I've been very, very lucky with trolls. We. I don't. Don't, don't know if you understand the word trolls, but we call them internet people who hide behind, you know, their keyboard at home and they they spew a lot of hate. I think I've been very lucky because I mean I have had stuff, but. I think I've been very, very lucky. And I think part of the reason for that is because I think if you know who, and then this is just as a, from an artist point of view, if you know who your demographic is and who your audience are, then I think they will connect with you and they'll resonate with you and there won't be any negativity. I think, so I'm, ver I'm very careful how, well, I think I am, anyway, I could be wrong. I think I'm very careful about you know, where I go looking for, um, to, to, to promote or whatever, to, to, to kind of say, hello, look at me, I'm a singer. Um, you know, you, for example, so if, if, if they said, will you come and do this gig? It's called, um, ACDC club. I'd be like, Oh, yeah, okay. What kind of music is it? Heavy metal. And you go on and I start singing careless whisper or something, you know, <laughs> that's when that, you know, so it, if, <clears throat> I, for me, I always, I'm always careful about where I go. Um, but I have, yeah, I, I have had kind of a lot of criticism. Um, I've, I've had criticism from the community, from the community um, about not representing enough, not being gay enough, not being this enough, and and that's really hard because I'm, I can only be me. Um, yes, I'm gay. I'm proud of being gay. But I cannot be, um, I cannot be, I, I kind of think myself like a rhinoceros. And I'm going to kind of say, you know, you, you've got, you've got this beautiful rainbow flag on the spectrum and you've got all these different colors. And I, I you know, you've got some brighter colors than others, you know, who, who radiate that, you know, and I do radiate in my own little way and I'm happy with that. And I think some people want me to be this kind of larger than life kind of, sassy thing and I, yeah i can do that but but it's not that's not really me and i, I mean, don't get me wrong i'm not like 
you know, I'm not like super masculine because I hate that word as well. I'm just me and, you know, um, I, and I have to be true to myself, you know, I think that's part of it, um, you know, so I, I'm going at my own pace and, and, you know, maybe I should be loud. And, um, but again, being an independent artist, you, you only, you've got limited resources because you're still growing and growing and growing and, and it takes time. Do you feel pressure to con to keep your style, for example? If one day you say, I want to record an ACDC song, would you feel uh, confident and free I'm going to do because of what I believe or would you worry about what people would say? No, I, I, in terms of recording a song, I, I don't care, but I've got to do it justice. That's the only thing that matters. If, if I'm going to record a song or put something out to people, it's really important that I try and do it some sort of justice I, I kind of bring something which is me to it, whether that's either through the video or through the voice or whatever, but it has to have my stamp in it. So I'd be open for anything. So, you know, I, I did, you know, I've done female vocalists, you know, I've done Rihanna, I've done Nadal. Um, you know, I also do male vocalists as well, you know, like George Ezra, George Michael, or the Georges. <laughs> there's, a, there's a George thing, but, um, Yes, yeah, so I, 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 as long as I, I feel I can do it justice or there is some kind of connection with me, then I'll sing anything. I, people do ask me to sing certain songs. They say, oh, you'd be great singing this. And I'll listen to it. And I just, it, it just washes over me. I don't, unfortunately, I don't connect to it. And um, part of me was thinking maybe I should set up kind of some, um, kind of like, Patreon or some GoFundMe thing where if someone wants to pay me to sing them their choice of song, then I'd be happy to do it. But I think, again, the reason why I haven't done that is because, well, one, for time. I haven't had the time to do it. But also, I just don't know if I'd do it justice. That, you know. So I am very picky about songs. Um, it's not because, you know, it's just only because I want to do the best I can. And like, I hope you like this, you know. So. Yeah, what's the more the most difficult? Choosing a song, recording a song, making a video, or they're promoting everything. What's the most challenge for you? Um, I'm good think, mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, R recording is amazing. I love recording. Um, doing the video is is fine, you know, because I, I'm yeah, I have no problem with that. I, I actually think, in all honesty, that the hardest thing is promoting. Um, Because I think for different reasons, well, yeah, be, most of the time, because I, everything is done my end by myself, by me. You know, that's what being an independent artist is. And it's so tiring. You get really tired by, you know, throughout parts of it. And by the time the song is out, your emotions, because it is, a, and I don't think anyone understands this, but it's like putting um, like a baby into the world or, you know, like saying, look, this is my puppy, please love it. You know, it, it's, it is like that. And you have to prepare yourself for not everyone's going to like it, you know, and, and it's mentally draining. So when the song comes out and you like, you have to promote it, you have to promote it. You know, I'm still learning lots of, lots and lots of ways of promoting, you know, and actually it, it, it's something again, which I need to work on, but it's def for me, it's definitely promotion. So we read a post last month where you said, and I quote, Oh, God. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you prepare today. <laughs> I have tried to remain true to who I am, despite some of the crap and hard times thrown my way from strangers and within my community. Many times I felt like giving up. Would you care to expand on that? <sighs> I, don't want to see, I don't want to seem ungrateful um, or, or anything like that, but I think... The stranger thing I can deal with, but I've, I've found it really hard to kind of get, get well, be accepted, I think, into certain venues to sing, you know, and I've also come across a lot of um, a certain type of artist who is very, who are very um, possessive of their turf or whatever, and or even though I'm a completely different artist, they're very... Uh, they become very jealous for whatever reason. Um, and you kind of think kind of, and, and, and here's a great example. 
if you look at uh, certainly in the UK, if you look at prides and you look at um, the type of act that dominates prides, for me, and it's not just me. There's many artists who feel the same, but it's very hard to kind of think. Well, actually, I don't feel represented up on that stage by these people, uh, but yet because they are these larger than life people. I mean, okay, I'm, you know, I'm talking about drag queens and if, I want to make thing, one thing very clear is I have a lot of drag friends. I love them to bits and it's, and it's nothing to do with that. It's to do with the people that put on these events and the people that put on, you know, bringing entertainers, you know, there is more, there is more diversity out there and there are people that need to see that diversity on stage. Um, I know drag is riding high because of RuPaul and, and it's fantastic what it's done for the community. And I, you know, hands up, I know how much the drag community has done, you know, for all of us. Um, but it's frustrating uh, for me and my other artist friends. And it's disheartening when we don't kind of like, well, look, we want to step up and represent and we don't get the same opportunities. And it's frustrating. It is very, very frustrating. Um, but uh, we're, we're different as well in, in terms of that. So it might, might be to do with that. And I do think, you know, the community, and, I, I, and it's, it's puzzled me and I've talked about and I've debated with this, but it does confuse me kind of thinking, well, is it because that we are male singers that, and, you know, we're not, or I'm going to say for myself that I'm not larger than life you know, camp or, I mean, I am camp, I'm not denying that, but is it because I don't dress up really loudly? Is that why I'm not, you know, welcome or whatever? And I've had people kind of pretty much say to me, you're not welcome, you're not part of me. There was actually one incident where in a bear club, would you believe that I was part of the lineup and then just taken off, you know, and, um, it's not because I can't sing. It's not because I haven't got experience. You know, it's simply because they wanted to make it this. And it wasn't even the owners. They, they were convinced by this particular act, you know, that, okay, this will work. We need these people. And, you know, and fine, you know, it is about them, but there is diversity and diversity needs to be celebrated, not just by me, trans people, black people. You know, there is a, a range out there and I think venues need to be more responsible um, and start welcoming in different types of acts. Many people outside don't know gays, they think that because you're gay you're all united. It's very funny when you say actually it's not. It's even the bears, if you go to the bear side, bears are not united at all. No. Only if you mention eventually, oh yes, you're bears, but then if you go through, it's not. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I agree. And and again, I've, I've talked about this and I obviously would like to hear your input on this, but, you know, I think as, as, as gay people, and this is just one side, so I'm not saying this is right, but this is an idea that, can, you know, I think many of us have grown up thinking we were wrong, we were bad, we were, you know, not correct in society. And I think a lot of us have grown up in a certain way, struggling with who we are. And even I think within the bear community, I think there's such, such, not, not just in the bear community, but in the gay community, there's fear, there's anxiety, there's kind of like, what about me? What about me? What about me in the community? And I don't think it's any anyone's fault. I, I actually think it's a, it, this is a society thing where where acceptance is important, you know, and especially for young people coming up, you know, through through the you know the years, you know, the, the new young generation of LGBTQ people, you know, I hope for them that they have this whole more, this idea that, okay, I know who I am, you know, the world's cool. And I know that doesn't always, that doesn't happen everywhere, but it is a society thing. That's my impression is that I think if the world was more accepting of who we were, I think there'd be less hate within the community about, okay, what about me? What about me? Okay. I'm this, I'm that. Um, you know, and, and you know, we're men after after all, and I think it, you know, sexuality, you know, sex comes into it an awful lot as well, where there's a lot of angst because, you know, 
you like this person, but this person doesn't like you, they like this person. And you, and you feel, and I, I, I can talk from this from experience, you feel you're not good enough by your own community because of the way you look, because you're not mussy enough, you're not hairy enough, you're not ginger enough, you know, whatever. Um, and I think that's kind of why, especially in the bear community, there's lots of, you know, division. Yeah. I think there's division. Because I felt visible in many bear events. Sometimes I've been to events of uh, uh, bear runs, kind of think, oh my God, nobody's noticing me here because maybe because I'm bigger. But it's kind of sad when you go to a place you think maybe here could be more accepted, but maybe now here I don't feel accepted either. It's mm -hmm. very, even for us, a bear success, we get the pictures. Many guys, the word you said earlier, enough. Or not be enough. We have so many of that people. Oh, yeah. Send a picture. Am I bad enough? Am I chubby enough? Am I whatever enough? Am I sexy enough? It's so yeah. sad to see that that end up happening because of rejections and things. Yeah, and very people have Charles ensure no, you are welcome. We are very welcome here. So there's no problem of not being enough because it doesn't work for us. But unfortunately, this is what the pattern, I, 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 I think you're right, and I and I th and I do think it's part of this. If everyone can accept kind of themselves, and I think it is to love yourself. You know, we, we've been faced for so many years that were wrong and they were bad, and therefore we. It kind of is traumatic that we're not good enough, and I think all of us, you know. It have to find some kind of true positive love for ourselves um, and and not worry about kind of and there is a, and I've experienced this in, in the bear world not in recent years because funny enough I, I've kind of as I get older I kind of feel like I've withdrawn a little bit just simply because of age not for any other reason but I kind of feel like status is something that's really important to gay people and I and I don't know what it is okay you know I've slept with so-and-so or or look at me look how big I am and or um I'm, I'm my job is this and you know it, it's kind of like I I think status is, is is again is not needed you know we're all human we're all beautiful people we just love ourselves and love one another and I know it's more complicated than that and I've just probably explained it really badly but I think status and sex is 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 confusing a lot of people into being truly happy for, for who they are. So uh, you released a cover of Rihanna's featuring uh, Calvin Harris, uh, We Found Love, to celebrate self-love and bring awareness to mental health in the LGBTQ plus community. Tell, tell us more about this. Um, so, because I, I've, I, I've gone through mental health problems, I like, you know, after my last relationship, I was, I was in a very, very bad place. Um, and the song, We Found Love, there's a lyric in there, We Found Love in a Hopeless Place. And the, there's two meanings behind that. Like, I saw myself as a, as, as a hopeless place. Um, I, I was very depressed. I think I, I probably did have depression. You know, I had a very gray, gray cloud one morning, and, and that was it. And I was just very different. And that song, "We Found Love in a Hopeless Place," is 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 actually, I am that hopeless place. Um, but I found love, and and that was with my partner Kim. And I'm not saying Kim would, everything was magic again, but um because things were you know were better before then because i do think you know rupaul is correct i think she says um if you can't love yourself how, how's any i can't remember this is terrible if you don't love yourself how can you love how can anyone love you there you go and i think that's really really true so i was very i i, I got it to a place where actually i was happy i was content and 
I, I wasn't really expecting love either. And then Kim comes along and, and uh, so that's what the song is about. So I, I try and promote mental health um, as much as I can. So there's um, a charity in Brighton who I've um, connected with a couple of times. And, uh, and I think, again, it's something that's really important within the community, within all of us, is, is our mental health. Because not only are we going through coronavirus, you know, but we're also dealing with, you know, who we are and, who's just, and members of society saying, oh, you're disgusting or whatever, you know. So mental health is, is, a, is a massive thing that I'm very passionate about because I think we all need to be aware of it. Um, and if we're aware of it, we can kind of um, slow or stop or um, maybe make ourselves feel a little bit, little bit better. Um, so I kind of, that's, that, that's, that's what that song means to me or that's why I chose it. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Uh, tell about, tell us about your neck, your newest single, Love at First Sight. Love at First Sight. Um, well, it's my favorite Kylie song. Um, uh, to be honest, I, I kind of, I've, I mean, I've always loved that song. And um, like when it first, it's, it's such a, it's my, well, it's such a great, it's, it's one of the, my favorite songs actually in, in general. Um, I didn't want it to, oh yeah, that's, that's, that's the artwork. So, because I, I kind of, um, with the mental health thing, I kind of wanted, I didn't want really to go down the mental health for, for this particular song, but I wanted it, it to be about positivity, uh, or be positive, because that's kind of who I am uh, as a person. And I tried to, uh, I thought Love at First Sight would be a great one, because it, it, it was an excuse when I came to Berlin and when I met my partner, it kind of summed up a lot. Now, I don't believe, first of all, in, in kind of like the traditional love at first sight, like I fell in love. I mean, don't get me wrong, I was knocked off my socks by my partner. Like, he's sexy as hell, um, he's beautiful. But there was a positive energy there between us. Like, there was just an energy there. Um, so the love at first sight is more about the... The, the, the positive vibes and the kind of, you know, that feeling of that, that, that instant kind of possible connection. But it also when it, it was my first trip to Berlin, uh, first time ever in Berlin, and I had a friend from Brighton, um, he, he just showed me around Berlin and I was just like, the history, um, the, the, the building, the architecture is just fantastic. So the video is trying to capture Berlin, Berlin's beauty, really. Um, and then the artwork, which you just showed, um, I didn't think anyone was going to do this, but um, yeah, I, I asked um, like fans and support. I still say fans for me is really weird because I don't think I'm, uh, you know, I'm that. I'm just like, I call them supporters, people who support me. And I said, would anyone like to send in a photo? I've got a project coming up. And I just thought, oh God, this is going to be so embarrassing. No one's going to send it. And people did, like, and and I was so touched, um, you know, by all these people that sent sending him photos. And then I panicked, thinking, okay, I've got to make this good. And um, then um, a mate of mine, Kevin, who's another singer from Belgium, my man in Belgium, singing. He's a really lovely guy, and uh, he he also does graphic design. And I said, can you do this with, with it? And he's like, yeah, yeah. And he did it, and. Uh, you know, I absolutely love the artwork and it, it's very special to me because it involves a lot of people that support support me and believe me. And I'm sure it's something um, I'll do again in the future. Um, I, actually, for, for those, I'm just looking at it, in the top left corner, which is probably that side, top left on the screen, that's my mum. And I, and I kid you not, that wasn't deliberate. I said to, I said to Kevin, I just snuck it in there. Um, I just snuck, snuck, snuck the photo in there. I said, Kevin, did you know you put my mum in the top left corner? Was that deliberate? He said, no, I don't know. And I just thought, whoa, that is really, really weird. Really, really weird. So, yeah, so the photos of everyone is uh, photos of loved ones, um, uh, photos of people who are no longer here, places where they fell in love with, um, pets. So it's something, again, that positive connection so it's not about falling in love like oh um, i love you it it's like okay i love this i love being in this present moment 
um, you know, I love this experience or I love you, or, you know. So that, that was the, the, the process behind it. It was really cool. It was very beautiful. Yeah. Actually, one of the questions was about that, the pictures. Yeah. Oh, there you <laughs> <laughs> really cool. Also, interesting about your mom there. So sometimes things have mystery way, mysterious ways. I, Maybe I, she was there too. Yeah. If free, if free, I mean, I sent it in, but no way was I expecting it. Like, I was literally, it's the first picture in the top left corner. And, I, and uh, yeah, I, I'm not a religious person, but I'm a little bit spiritual and, and, I like to believe my mum is watching over me and, you know, um, my music is, uh, the, my voice is very much me keeping her alive. I'm going to get emotional in a minute. Uh, it's very much keeping her alive. Um, and also this ring I wear, this was hers. I actually got her this as a Christmas present uh, yeah. from the Caribbean. It's a Crucian hook ring because I used to live there and mom, my mum was still alive. So, she, yeah, she is the woman in my life and... Um, the, the music and stuff is is me very much keeping her alive because she, she was a she was actually a dancer but she used to sing all the time she had, she had a lovely voice as well no oh, sorry for your loss oh thanks boy that was very good no I'm, I'm, i mean it's years ago but it, it's yeah. still it's still like still with you. so strange i'm a 41 year old man now and i still it still upsets me it still gets me and like as soon as i start talking about her I'm just like, oh, and I, I've, I've actually tried to get help about this. I said, why do I end up getting so upset every time I talk about my mum? And um, yeah, it's, it's, and it's just one of those things. That, like again, I've learned to live with it. Okay, that's how it is. Don't be ashamed of it. You know, I love my mum. Speak of song, any plans for a next song or video? I'm going to pro probably try and do something for Christmas as well for everyone. Um, every year around Christmas time, I get people saying, are you going to do a Christmas EP? Are you going to do And um, I don't know. It depends, it depends on time and how everything goes, but I'd like to think I will. So that's a, an exclusive for you there. <laughs> Labels ring, are you listening? In the lane, snow is glistening. A beautiful sight, we're happy tonight. Walking in a winter wonderland. God. And by the way, I love your video for the Take That uh, cover. It was so cool, the choreography. Oh, these days, cool. yeah. Oh, it was so nice. Thank you. Do you know what? I, I, I joke about dad dancing, like, I'm proud of my dad dancing and you know and i think and I, I think the bear community i think we are we are kind of like we're brilliant at doing like kind of like dad dance. i mean also being sexy as well but i think dad dancing is really really nice on, on you know it's really nice to watch but i just made fun of myself doing it but in the these days video like i i actually really enjoy dancing as well and it one of the you asked me earlier on what would i say to myself my younger self six years ago i'd probably actually say do a bit more do a bit more dancing because actually i, I quite enjoy it you know I mean, I mean i'm not the best dancer i'm not a justin timberlake at all <laughs> i love how surprising it was and then it was cool it's something you don't expect yeah. that would happen and then you did you could see it was fun it was positive so every time i hear that song i think about you in the video it's oh, funny cool. it's like oh. I mean, it's, it's my favorite i mean it's it's a love it, by the way yeah. Oh, me too. Uh, me too. I'm a, I'm a huge uh, Say That fan. And...
uh, there's a few recent stuff on it, but that's probably my favourite of, of their recent stuff. And then Prey from the 90s. Um, I actually know the dance routine for that, and I'm <laughs> sure that'll come out. That'll come out in the future at some point. Um, so yeah, I actually know it, but that's proper 90s boy band, like early 90s boy band dancing. So I think pe- I think people a bit be a bit like, yeah, but but it is what it is. And I would hope, you know, obviously I spent a bit of money on the These Days video because I had some money at the time. I hope in the future that I will do like another bit of dancing or whatever in some form or other. Might be like, I don't know, <laughs> I, I'm not it, but I just want to enjoy, enjoy myself and if people like it, then great. Well, that's so cool. I really like yeah. another one I liked was the Careless Whisper. Yeah. I mean, it's my favorite. It's my favorite um, to sing live. I mean, when, when I sing that, the whole place goes deadly silent. It puts pressure on me to like vocally deliver. I'm like, oh God, they're all really listening. Because it's actually quite a challenging song to sing because of some of the falsetto and there's a big note at the end. Um, but again, I, I kind of really enjoy seeing it because it's it's that's very raw emotion in that song for me. And I've seen George Michael twice. So. Oh, so lucky. I never got to see him live. Wow. It was, was an it- accident. An accident, oh. it was unexpected. He joined a contest or something. Yeah, it was. And then suddenly he messaged, Oh, we got the tickets to see George Michael. Yeah. I said, Oh, what? <laughs> and then he went, it was actually, it was the last concert. Yeah, we, year. we didn't expect it. It was just. We Which, went- when? How long ago was this? Well, it was his last concert. Uh, oh, was it the Symphonica one? No, it was before. And it was okay. here in Toronto, 2000. That's a good question. <laughs> I, w- I don't remember the year. I wish I wish I saw him live. And me too. We we were really shocked when we heard he had passed. Oh, me too. And again, it is really sad to see what happened because what a talent and, and amazing for, for the community. You know, um, I, I loved his humor, and if you listen and and some of the stuff which has come out since he's died, like the stuff he did for charity. Just a really great, uh, you know, person. Um, got a lot of time, a lot, a lot of time for George Michael. By the way, did you did you see? Um, have you heard? I can't make him sing. I can't make you love me. Um, on the no. ladies and gentlemen, I think he, I think it's like his greatest hits album, where you know the song um, "Outside" and "As." Yes, uh, it was on there. I, he's not, he he released on there I Can't Make You Love Me, which is like a live version of him when he had the uh, short hair. Mm-hmm. Um, and that song, I, I was really drunk one night, really drunk, and a friend put the DVD on, that song came up, and that was when I was like, God, George Michael is phenomenal. And I, and I covered I Can't Make You Love Me, even though it's by Bonnie Raitt, because of George Michael. You know, mm-hmm. because, of, again, the, the passion in that song was just like, Whoa. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think he's a fantastic vocalist. He yeah. had a strong connection to Brazil because his boy, his eternal love, was Brazilian. Uh, oh. One of the albums he dedicated to to the boy, the love was about love, Tom Jobim about music. So it was an interesting connection to Brazil. He met a guy in Brazil. And I had a, con- I had a poster on my wall growing up. <laughs> Oh wow! Was it was it from the Wanda? Was it the big hair and the tight jeans? Yeah, and the leather jacket. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. Good memories. Good memories. Yeah, very good memories. So, anything you wanna add? Anything you wanna invite? No, I, 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 wanna, I honestly want to say to both of you, thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to talk. I think I've never spoken so open and I maybe you know spoken a bit naively in some, some parts but I've spoken f- from my heart um and I've never had the opportunity to before and I just want to say thank you for what you do for the community um f- for letting people have this window and you know it's so nice of you to, to do that thank, thank you. you and we are back <laughs> like usual I like to thank Paul, Paul. It was so much fun yes. so nice you don't believe in us, but all the situations we talk for the first time with all of them. So it's also a privilege to be able to talk finally with Paul, in person. Great. 
with our guests, our friends. So thanks so much. Really nice getting to know him, learning more about his career, his life. Really appreciate. So like we always do, don't forget to check him. Then press the button before I go. Okay. <laughs> Here, Paul Middleton official on Facebook. He's on YouTube. YouTube. You can check out videos. his great videos. He's also on Instagram and Twitter, Paul M. Music. And we've also featured him on our Instagram. He's also several streaming services. But want to find out more, go here. Find link.to, not Toronto, <laughs> Paul M. Love. So you're going to have all the links for all of his music, all his stuff, and everything. And speaking about links, you can also go to bearsincess.com. And subscribe. For more about us. Don't forget to subscribe to our Receiving newsletters channel. about us, about events here in Toronto, and also, oh, here, wrong button. <laughs> and uh, the most important is. Stay fluffy. Have yourself a. Merry little Christmas Let your heart be light From now on our troubles will be out of sight